Evening, friends. Welcome back to another Corksicle production. Got my coffee. Let's get after it. We're drinking uh, Gavalia Dark Roast. I've been kind of stuck on this the last few months. I keep going back to it. I try other stuff and then I go back to this. Cause it's really smooth for a dark for a dark roast. Um, yes, welcome back to the channel. Been too long, as per usual. But uh, but here I am and uh, got some got some good stuff to to share with you. Uh, guess we'll just do the uh, we'll do the the usual show what I'm sampling uh, today. I was sampling actually I was sampling this in the morning. This is Tiger from uh, Zoologist. I'm really enjoying it. It's um, kind of a simple fragrance, but it's very nice. I also sampled this this morning, and I'm kind of revisiting it. I don't have a bottle of it, and I'm really debating on whether I should get it, because this is pretty good. This is Cape Heartache by Imaginary Authors. Um, oh, and in one of the halls, I have a new Imaginary Authors, just not this one. But Cape Heartache is a great fragrance. Holy cow. Um, I've been sampling this one recently. Um, I've been kind of diving into some of those Middle Eastern houses, uh, and I mentioned it in a couple of my videos, houses like Ajmal and Al Haramain and uh, Ibrahim Al Qureshi. Um, and this is another one from a house that's related. Um, this one is um, this is called Special Blend by um, what's his name? Samad or no? Uh, Abdul Samad Al Qureshi. And this is called Special Blend. It's just a decant of it, but um, this is really nice. It's a it's a classy. I don't know. It's got a golden hue about it. It's it's oody, but it's but it's got a shebra like structure to it. Really very nice. Special Blend by Abdul Samad Al Qureshi, which is a mouthful. Uh, stuff I've been wearing the last couple of days. Uh, what am I? Oh, well, here's what I wore today. Um, saw a video earlier. Um, gentleman's name, uh, the channel's name is Memory Flow. Very good channel. If you want to check, check out a good channel. Um, he's, uh, very well spoken. I think he's from Romania. <clears throat> Don't quote me. But uh, he's got a good channel. He's he's uh, very articulate and and really uh, really does nice reviews. And he talked about this one today. This is Jaipur Om. This is the Eau de Parfum. It's a really good fragrance. I I always forget to pull for this one. This and Boucheron, two very good fragrances. Spicy, aromatic, a little boozy, good stuff. Jaipur. That's what I wore today. Um, in one of the recent hauls, I kind of picked up a few cheapies and, uh, I picked up this one and wore it, uh, yesterday. This is boss number one. Um, it's the modern version. Very nice. Uh, still a good fragrance, but there is a, but it is not the vintage version, the boss, uh, Boss number one. This is the one that this is the vintage. It doesn't say number one on it. The honey note in here is <clears throat> maybe one of the best honey notes in my collection. Save a few, maybe slow dive and maybe a couple others, but the modern does not have <clears throat> this honey. And there's something about the honey done in the vintage that that really just sets it apart and just gives it that. <clears throat> something magical. Uh, day before, I wore this beauty, which every time I wear it, I <clears throat> fall deeper in love with it. Maybe one of the best sandalwoods in my collection. Ego East by Chanel. I don't know. I don't know what I need to say about this. It's there's the vintage version, and there's another another instance of. The modern being very good. And there's a lot of people out there that, that like to say the modern. And in some cases, moderns are just fine. 
but this vintage there's the the sandalwood is just that much better i think it's worth having if i ever run out of this which i'm getting worried about <coughs> i would source another vintage bottle for sure uh day before that i wore uh this and this is called la fille de berlin by uh sir Tutans. it's a great fragrance um I've been kind of trying to shop my collection and pull things I haven't worn in a while. And this is, this is really nice. This is, um, it's kind of the, the color of the juice kind of makes you, makes you feel like what it smells like. Um, it's kind of a wine like rose, like, um, just a touch of fruitiness. The rose is kind of pretty well dug into the fragrance. It's not, <clears throat> it's not blasting out. Um, and there's just this, maybe a, maybe a touch of metallic in it, kind of earthy, but, uh, but it, wine is what I think about when I wear this red wine. It's good stuff. Maybe a Pinot Noir. Uh, okay. So that's out of the way. Uh, things I've worn recently. Uh, I pulled this one out the other day. I don't know how I got to talking about it with somebody, but, um, maybe one of the best lavenders in my collection. Caron Poronum. I know why I pulled this out. I pulled this out because I picked up another Caron. Caron. Sorry. Uh, so I wore that. But, uh, okay, so I've been stacking up and isolating these these hauls that I've gotten over the past few months. And there are multiple different hauls of, you know, different sizes. And I didn't get everything all at once. There's, you know, that would have been impossible. One of them... One of the hauls is something that I was sent by a friend of the channel, and we'll get to that. Um, now, they've been piling up here for a while, so some of them are mixed in. It's not going to be separate hauls. It's just I'm just going to show everything off and see what happens. Um, okay, let's see. First, <clears throat> first this one, <clears throat> this one I had in the collection a while back. <clears throat> Pardon me. This one I had in the collection a while back, and I had a friend over, a friend of the family, and he mentioned liking it. I showed him the collection, and he was trying different things, and he said he liked this. So I said, yeah, go ahead, keep it. And I knew as soon as I said that, I was going to regret it. Um, and uh, I'd had it on my list to kind of put back in the collection because it's, it's worth having maybe one of the best from this house. And this is Exceptionnel by Mont Blanc. Um, I think it's discontinued now. <clears throat> it's getting harder to find. I got this one from a friend for a very good price. Um, I don't. I don't know that I would pay eBay prices for it because it's it's good, but not you know super duper. But it's there's something about it that I really like. Um, coffee, lavender, <clears throat> uh, mandarin in the top, and then. There's a, a ginger and mint that kind of lifts it up. And then there's like an amber and patchouli in the base. And it's just so well balanced. And you got to go heavy on the sprays. Um, doesn't last forever. But, uh, but if you go heavy enough on the sprays, you'll get, a good, you'll get a good afternoon out of it. This is, you ever run across it, that is some good stuff. Exceptional by Mont Blanc. But I, would, I would say probably best from the house. Uh, for me. Um, okay. So this one, um, with, along with one of these hauls, my friend offered this up and even though I have it, uh, he was selling it for such a good price. I couldn't pass it up to fortify the, uh, the armory. Uh, I've mentioned many times that Nino Cerruti Porom is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. And, uh, this is a little 20 mil presentation. And it's full, and it's pristine, and the juice is fantastic. So I was like, for the price he was offering, I snatched it up just to have a little bit more of this juice in the collection. Um, it's a great little presentation, right? I'm sure there's a glass bottle in there. I don't want to. I don't want to risk breaking the whole thing open. Um, I have a a full 75 mil EDT and aftershave, plus I have another partial of it with kind of a janky atomizer. But um, I just thought this was a cool piece and a good way to get another, get another little bit of the juice in my collection. <clears throat> so, okay. 
um, with with this haul I'm about to show you. Uh, well, I don't know if it's. I'm just going to show stuff. I I can't keep track of all these hauls. <laughs> um, with one of the hauls of. Uh, I got from a friend of mine. He had a few of these that I had wanted to try for a long time. And uh, so I got a couple of minis. One is Boss Spirit, which is uh, it's a very good fragrance. Now, I'm not sure it's spoken highly of, and I like it, and it's very good, but I'm not sure. Here's the bottle. I'm not sure that I'm willing to pony up the, the unicorn prices for it. Um, we'll see. If I ever run across it with you know for a really good price i might but it's good but for me it's not like uh you know i gotta run out and get it um <clears throat> now this one i've been wanting to try for a long time this is edmund rudnitska's last creation and this is ocean rain now this one is still i'm still seeing it out there for semi-reasonable prices this one is one that i might I might spring for down the road. Very unique creation. It's um, kind of a cool bottle, too. And I think the full-size bottle looks like this, too. Um, this is one I think I would consider buying. I don't know that I'd pay a million dollars for it, but it is a beautiful fragrance. It's kind of aquatic. It's kind of strange florals. And... Uh, a little fruitiness in it it's um it's a shebra it's dark it's kind of bright I, I don't know how to describe it it's a very unique fragrance but uh that's one i would uh give strong consideration to of course it's not closing properly now there we go okay so <clears throat> i got this haul from a friend um and i got them all for way cheaper than I could have got them on eBay. Um, these are things that I haven't had in my collection that I, I don't know why I put them off for so long. They're things that I think should be in my collection. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of that Caron earlier, this, I I don't know why, but I always thought this was going to be challenging. Um, and I kind of sidestepped it for a while. But I am so glad that I have it now. This is Le Troisimum by Caron. This is the modern version, and I don't know what the the vintage version smells like, but this is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is among the couple of fragrances I've pulled in over the last few months that have really knocked me out. Um, this is a great fragrance. I'm going to be diving into this one uh, over the next few months for wares. It's really very good. Um, okay, this one, this is another one that I've kind of uh, kind of sidestepped for whatever reason, and uh, I've heard it spoken highly of um, from a lot of trusted sources, and uh, I don't know why I didn't think this was collection worthy. I, I don't know, but this is Versace Loam. And uh, I don't know what version this is. I don't know if this is. I mean, it's a built-in sprayer, which makes me think it's a little older. But I don't know. I don't know. It's a great bottle. But this is fantastic. This uh, immediately, I don't know if anybody else gets this, but this immediately made me think of, uh, made me think of this. And it's that, that lemon, that sharp lemon and pedigree up top kind of made me think of this, of Foth's Green Water. Um, that same kind of unique, um, kind of uh, addictive pedigree lemon smell. Um, this is very good. This is, this is a great wake-me-up fragrance in the morning. Summertime fragrance. Uh, I'm going to be getting wear out of that for sure. All right, I don't know what I'm brushing for. I got plenty of time. All right, let's see. Okay, this one. Now I have quite a few from the house, and you would think this would already be in my collection, but I, I guess I don't know what my logic was about not being 
enthusiastic about putting this in a collection, maybe because of the comparisons to Shalimar. I like Shalimar, but um, I don't like it as as much as some of the other offerings from the house, like Lair Blue, Mitsuko, which I have uh, several versions of. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I put this off, but here it is. Abbey Rouge. This is the Eau de Toilette. And this is another surprise, like the Caron. It is a curious, borderline strange lemon-vanilla combo that hits you right away. And then there's this spicy patchouli and... Um, it's very strange. I don't, I don't even... Yeah, kind of a, a light smokiness that comes in and blends with that lemon and vanilla. You wouldn't think that would work. But it does. It's um, it's very strange. Very strange, but I'm digging it. Javi Rouge. Eau de Toilette. Uh, running out of room. And this one I just picked up because it was kind of cheap and I... I heard good things from from a few people, and I'm not disappointed. This is really very nice. Um, it's <laughs> it's not set the world on fire kind of great, but it is a very nice fig fragrance. And this is Salvador Salvatore Farragamo Porom, and kind of a cool bottle. It's got the name. No, it's got the name on the other side. It's got the name like right there. It's kind of a twisted bottle. Really nice presentation. Um, this was a pleasant surprise. This is a really nice fig fragrance. A little earthy. Very smooth. Very well blended. Um, for a cheapy designer. Really nice. Salvador Farragamo Womo. It's not Salvador, is it? It's Salvador. Anyway. Okay. Moving on. Oh. Another little... Thing one of my friends threw in with that haul actually um, <clears throat> which was a kind little gift he knows I collect little side pieces of of things for the collection like shea foams and deodorants and other things like that he threw in this little um, bar of soap from Hermes which I thought was kind of cool um, it smells kind of good I would I want to say this is probably from Eau de Orange Vert, or maybe Eau de Cologne, but kind of cool. Kind of cool. I don't know that I would ever use it, but it's a cool little piece. Cool little piece to have. Okay. Uh, I don't know how we're going to... This is going to... Guys, buckle up, because, you know, I'm just going to... I'm just going to take my time so that we can get everything in. I don't want to forget anything. Um, okay. We've got everything from cheap partials to, to kind of new stuff. I mentioned the, um, <clears throat> I mentioned the imaginary author's house, uh, which is a house I'm very fond of. Um, I don't have that. Ma I only have one in the collection. Actually, this makes two. I have, um, what do I have? I have the, uh, Cobra and the Canary, which is one of my favorites from the house. But that Cape Heartache, I revisited that today and, <clears throat> they do good things and this one caught my eye and I was lucky enough to get my hands on it and this is Blend 83 and I really like these presentations they're really kind of cool and they put like little samples right here um, this Blend 83 is really very nice right up my alley it's my kind of it's my jam um, same old same old presentation um, the, the kind of cool art um, the, uh, the juice is super dark. Um, dark chocolate, sugar, sugar cane rum, Arabica coffee, uh, velvety foam, benzoin, night musk, night musk, sounds like a superhero, night musk, uh, and decadence. I don't, I don't know that decadence is a note, but okay. Um, this is nice. 
this is nice. This reminds me a little bit of Gallagher's, uh, what's that one? Gallagher has a, it's called Cafe Car, uh, Carpe Cafe. And this is giving me a little bit of vibes to that. Um, this has a little bit more going on, a little boozier, a little more chocolate than that one. Um, but this is a win. This is really a win. Uh, blend 83. So, all right, let's see. We're kind of jumping around here. All right, uh, what else? We got two here. Um, okay, uh, this I just kind of picked up. I was, I think he threw it in for free. I don't, I don't even think he charged me that much for this. I think he just charged me a couple of bucks, but I wanted to get my nose on it. He had a partial, so I was like, yeah, can I get that? And this is um, Night Flight by Yope, or Jupe. And uh, this is a Pierre Bourdon. And uh, I've, I've really started to accumulate quite a few of Pierre, Pierre Bourdon's creations. Um, this is nice. It's him, obviously, playing around with that pineapple. Um, but it's... Yeah, it's synthetic. It's a, it's a cheapy. It's, it's yope at its finest. You know, I think he did the best with whatever budget they gave him. Um, it's nice. I, I don't know that I'd spend unicorn money on it. Um, but I'm happy to have that, you know, quarter, third of a bottle there. It's kind of nice. Um, I haven't even worn it yet. I've only sampled it a few times. Um, okay. Uh, we're, and Okay, so with with this this haul, um, I have started to put quite a few of these Cartiers from the higher line into the collection. Been lucky enough to get my hands on a few. Um, this is uh, this one is Leur Le Brilliance and uh, this Cartier Matilde Laurent. Um, I have another one. It's called Lair uh, Fugus, I think. Um, and then I was lucky enough to get my hands on these two. And this one is, this one's just a tester. I'll show that in a second. But this one is in the older presentation. And Cartier really puts together a nice presentation. Um, this is Oud and Oud from their, their higher end line. Um, and this is kind of a leathery casing the box itself is is kind of a kind of a wood kind of a wood box kind of a really nice presentation up top um and you know great little presentation comes with a comes with a card gives a little information mostly in other languages um that's kind of cool though i think um okay and uh these bottles that's kind of a cool stand too. It's a little velvety. Really nice. Really, really nice. Cartiers. The the more I get into Cartier, the more I'm I'm becoming a fan of the house. Um and these higher end ones that Mathilde Laurent has done are phenomenal. Uh every one I get, I'm more impressed. And bottles kind of got this iridescent faded what's that called um you know you know what i'm talking about bottles like graded a uh, gradient and uh this is oud and oud and i'll tell you what you don't think you don't think designers use oud but experience i have with oud and i have quite a bit of it um in my collection i think they're using real oud in these bottle in these uh releases what grade of oud to you know uh, what level they're using them i don't know but there's certainly oud in this and this is a beautiful composition and uh and these aren't cheap either these these are going retail they're going for a lot of money so it wouldn't surprise me at all if there was a good amount of of real oud in them uh okay let's see put this back together 
Got one more that I'm very stoked about. I like this one very much, but this one, I was lucky enough to get my hands on. It's just a tester box, so there's no need to show that. But uh, my friend Eugene speaks highly of this one, and uh, he rarely he rarely steers me wrong. So uh, I was really happy to get my hands on this one, and this one is Santel and Oud. Oud and Santel, pardon me. Oud and Santel, it's a great bottle too. Um, magnetic cap, and the cap's kind of, cap's kind of cool, kind of substantial. It's got a little ribbon on it, um, but we're talking about sandalwoods on Ego East. This is, um, this I feel like uses a little less Oud than the Oud and Oud, but, uh, it's very well blended, very well balanced. Sandal was beautiful in here. Touch of real oud, I, I feel like. I don't think they're using synthetic garbage. They're using, and the price of these would suggest that. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Um, one of the best Cartiers that I've come across. I mean, I like that, the Leurs Le line. Um, but now that I've started to get into these oud, the Oud line. I'm very curious about the Oud and Amber, the Oud and Mint, Mint, Moth, Oud and Moth. I'm curious about that one. Um, I, I, th I think Rich Mish said that he had the Oud and Mint, e Oud and Moth, and didn't care for it. Um, but that's maybe just not his taste. Oh, and uh, the person that the person that these fragrances came from was very kind to send and uh, a whole bag full of these old vintage Cartier um, samples and decants, which I thought was really very nice. Kind of cool that they um, they sent these along. Um, and some of these older Cartier presentations are really nice, little velvety bag. Um, this is the Uden Amber, and uh, this one is very good. Very, very good. Very sexy amber. Um, so I'll be getting into these. They also sent along pouches for these. Um, this is like kind of a velvet, kind of a velvet carrying case to put the fragrance down in, which I thought was kind of kind of cool. I don't know that I'm fancy enough to use something like this, but it is very cool to have in a collection. And here's another one, even cooler. It's a, a leather carrying case from Cartier. And his fragrance sits down. It's got this black velvet kind of thing. I just thought this was cool. I wanted to share that. Um, that was very cool of them to send that along. Uh, okay. We're getting down to it now. Uh, okay. So a friend of the channel uh, reached out to me. I don't know that they want to be, I don't know that they want to be revealed. So I'm going to kind of respect their privacy. Reached out and, and we got the corresponding. He said, I see you like Avon, that you're getting into Avon. And I said, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm a big fan of Avon. And uh, he said, I want to send you, I want to send you some. And I was like, yeah, I felt kind of funny. And, but he seemed, you know, he seemed pretty adamant and, sincere and i said okay send him you know I, I i really appreciate it and he knows who he is and i can't tell you how much i appreciate it because he sent me some very cool stuff um he even sent me a few things that aren't avon's which we'll get into in a second um and i couldn't have imagined what he sent me <laughs> it's really over the top what he sent me um very cool stuff First, he sent me a, a little partial, uh, kind of cool to get my nose on it, just to have in a collection for reference. This is Charlie by Revlon, and this is it's beautiful. It's in perfect condition. Big, big smoky Shepra, big florals, biting, very nice, very nice. Charlie, very cool to have in a collection for reference. Um, he also sent me this. Now, I don't have this in the, in my collection, but I think my dad does somewhere. 
along with his Old Spice and some other things. And uh, this is a very nostalgic fragrance. And I'm glad he sent it to me because I didn't have it in a collection. This is Stetson. I don't know that this is an older version. I He didn't mention it being vintage of any kind. Yeah, it says Cody on it, so it's fairly recent. But it is good. I forgot how good uh, I forgot how good Stetson is. Stetson is a good fragrance. I think this is way underrated, and it's you know it's a cheapie, so um, good stuff to have that in the collection. He sent me this one. Now I I'd come across this in my travels on Etsy and eBay and down the rabbit hole, and this is something I've been interested in. Um, just never pulled the trigger on it. This is Polynesian Jade Cologne. I don't know if any of you are familiar with this one. Um, this is from the Lander Company, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Lander Company. And uh, this is really very unique. It's a um, kind of a foresty fougere, but it's got, I don't know if it's the naming convention that makes you think of it, but it's got kind of a tropical island kind of a vibe to it like like a forest near an ocean i don't know how to describe it but uh it's very unique um very unique i don't have anything in my cl maybe i don't know what the closest thing i could liken it to maybe small toe with that smokiness i don't know but uh polynesian jade awesome collection awesome addition to the collection uh, okay, and then he sent me Avon's. Um, this one is a, this is a, I would think a feminine marketed fragrance. This is called Angel Song with Lyra. Here's my heart cologne. And uh, really a very cool little presentation. Um, a lot of these Avon's had, you know, these statues and animal heads and different things on the top of their their bottles and a cool little presentation um it's just it's just plastic but it's kind of cool and this one's another big floral shebra um but it's beautiful it's not it doesn't smell cheap it doesn't smell you know it smells something like paloma picasso maybe uh, something in that neighborhood, but there it is, Angel Song, very cool. Um, okay, another one he sent um, that I was kind of knocked out by. Now, I immediately thought that this was something connected to the liquor, being that it's called Wild, uh, wild Turkey, um, but it's just, just the story of <laughs> Wild Turkey. It's kind of cool. And the bottle is exactly what you think it might be. It is a wild turkey. And the bottle is full, by the way. Well, not full, but it's got quite a bit of juice in it. I think this is an 8-ounce. Yeah. Or 6-ounce, sorry. And this is Wild Country. I don't know how well you can see that. This is Wild Country, one of their more famous fragrances. And um, it, it I'm sure at one time has a large, uh, maybe a gold... Uh, turkey head on the top of it but uh, it's just got the cap and I'm fine with that but um, it's a heavy glass bottle and this is nice wild country is really very nice I'll tell you what it's it's not it's not a million miles away from Stetson or something like that um, but very cool very cool to have in a collection wild country um, okay now, one one more, and then we've got one other thing to show. Um, okay, this is something I'd heard about. Um, this is one of those fragrances that kind of gets talked about by people that, that know Avon fragrances, and I never, never came across my radar to get my hands on. Um, I've heard good things about it, though, and this is called Trezara Cologne. And to the best of my knowledge, this is a pretty vintage version. Um, but whatever the case is, this is a good fragrance. Trezara. Uh, 
sorry. Trezara. Great bottle. Love the bottle. It looks like an inkwell kind of a but um these are all splashes, which is which is cool. I just decant them. But this is nice. This is probably the nicest one he sent me. Um yeah, it's beautiful. It's um it's kind of got an amberiness to it. Um boozy, smoky, rich, bright, but dense. That's really nice. I have to give that some wear and and uh discover that one a little bit more. Go uh go check out go check out uh Varanus Vidari's thoughts on it. I'm sure he's I'm sure he's talked about that one. Um that is the guy that's the source of all things Avon. Him and JJ Colburn. They uh their encyclopedia is about <clears throat> about Avon stuff, which is great because I'm starting to dive into them. I have like a, a ton over there. I've showed them off before. Now, last but certainly not least, there's this one. Um, I have been a fan for a while now of Mona Diorio's creations. And a few years back, I got this decant of Mona Diorio's Oud. This is the original Oud from the, let's say it right, the, the line is called Les Nombres d'Or, I believe. Don't quote me, but I think that's the line, her original line that she put out. And this Oud is one of those originals. And this, this is one of the best, this is one of the best things I've ever smelled. I mean, this is up there with my thoughts on things like, uh, things like, uh, I'm, it's escaping me now, but the, this is, one of the best things in my collection, one of the most well-made, unique, and interesting creations that I have. It's basically an Oud and Osmanthus. Um, <clears throat> the quality is off the charts. Um, I was thinking of, uh, I was thinking of this, um, the Bertrand du Chauffeur, and I, I don't know why the name is escaping me now, and it's going to bother me. Uh... Uh, Neil Vermeer, Trey. It's kind of, you know, that level of of perfumery. That's that's where Moni Diorio sits in my head. Bertrand du Chauffeur, that kind of thing. Now, that is near impossible to get hold of a bottle of. It's those older bottles are going for big, big money. Um, but I was lucky enough to get my hands on the second generation. We could call it um, after she passed. Uh, her partner took over the business and put out second generation, basically, of of that fragrance. And they, for one reason or another, they renamed it. Um, some of the reading that I did speculates that they renamed it because some parts of the fragrance couldn't be couldn't be sourced exactly like the original formula. I don't know if it was the oud or different materials in it. Um, and I don't know for sure any of that, but, um, they renamed it Oud Osmanthus. And, um, really happy to have this in my collection. Uh, great presentation, great bottle. Um, this is a killer. This is a, is a love, Mona Diorio. Now, the question is, are they the same? We've talked a few times about reformulations and vintage versus modern modern and that's a long conversation that's been had many times by many people um and depending on the fragrance i fall on different sides of that argument um but for this one they're they're slightly different and the difference is with that original oud the oud hits you from the door Right from the door, you get the oud, um, and then the osmanthus sits right behind it, and and then it kind of smooths out. But you get that oud pop up again in the base, um, a very high quality oud. Now for this one, the osmanthus hits you, hits you right up front from the door, um, and that 
that Ood is plays a secondary uh, play, is a secondary player in that opening, and then in the mid, <clears throat> that's where they kind of converge and become essentially the same fragrance all the way through the dry down. Um, this maybe there is a slight tick lower in the quality of the the oud. Maybe that's just by just how it happened, but um, you can tell that the oud there is either dosed higher or a better quality. I don't know what it is, but there's a little difference in the in the oud and a little bit a little bit of a difference in the structure of how they they built the fragrance. This is, once it gets into the mid again, they're they're essentially the same fragrance, but in the top, it opens up different. Um, yeah, that's the best way I can say it. But otherwise, uh, this isn't a this isn't a step down. Uh, this is this is a real pleasure to have in a collection. This is a beautiful fragrance, um, and I've tried some of the other ones from the line, and this house sits <clears throat> sits a sits on top uh, on top of a very small mountain of very good fragrance houses um and uh i couldn't be happier to have this in a collection and with that i believe we are at the end of the road i think i got everything um well i appreciate y'all coming back and visiting me even though it's been a while i'm gonna try to get more regular and i'm gonna try to do that as opposed to just saying it um always appreciate the uh, the interaction in the comment section if you have anything to teach me about any of this stuff any any directions to point me in any info um, let me know what you're what you've been wearing what you what your latest pickups are always always dig the interaction in the comments y'all have a great night stay grateful peace